At Chamba in the Nanumba North Municipality of the Northern Region, residents are impatiently waiting to have their road fixed. <laughs> Ninga Mwankambuan is the chairman of the Yam Sellers and Drivers Union in Chamba. <laughs> The 17.5 km Wulensi Chamba Road was cut off at the peak of the rainy season last year. As that part of the season approaches, residents dread being cut off again. Okay. 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 Chamba has an important yam market which attracts traders from across the country. This makes the road a very important one. Fortunately, this road was awarded to a contractor on 1st June 2018 and was due to be completed in 18 months. In August 2019, more than a year after the contract was awarded, work is yet to begin. The people of Chamba have doubts about the competence of the contractor. No mo ba ya mo pe contractor ya papa, no mo ba ya ko ene. Anya ala ala contractor for we mo di mo mo dia. Ko e we mo ba ya, mo ba twa di akwama se wo ya ya wie. Ani so so start to top e. Ana ko e mo ba ju mo sika ko. O mo fi di o mo ya. O so twa si ba ko pe. This is the contract for the construction of this road. How I came by this contract is both intriguing and disturbing. Shoddy work and the problematic execution of government projects have their rules in the procurement process that lead to the award of the contracts. Daniel Domelevo is the Auditor General of Ghana. If you have gone through or perused our audit reports, you will see that uh, all the reports have gotten issues to do with procurement, different forms and shapes of uh, procurement related offenses. Sometimes, which you and me are used to, they construct a road which can barely last for a year. And you ask yourself, are we getting value for money? And all these has continued for a very long time because of lack of oversight in the country. Over the years, the PPA which was established to care procurement infractions and fraud has been accused of complicity in the promotion of these infractions. There was no due diligence, there was no price, uh, you know, uh, reasonableness checks. Mm -hmm. So if you want to buy a car, let's say you want to buy a Land Cruiser, and then you put in your application that you want to go and buy your Land Cruiser at uh, uh, $230,000. The price was not an issue. They look at it, they say, oh, the, this institution, Minister of uh, Works and Housing wants to go and buy a Land Cruiser for the Minister or Deputy Minister at the cost of $230,000. The $230,000 was not touched. They look at it and say, oh, the minister needs a car, so that prover is given. Under the Ecuador administration, however, the Public Procurement Authority has been hailed as the shining light by the government as a protector of the public pairs. Government has also made, in 2017, significant savings of some 800 million CDs in government procurement as we depart from sole sourcing as the primary method of public procurement. That departure will strengthen our public finances and make it possible for us to finance our development ourselves. Honorable Speaker. While presenting the 2019 media budget review, 
Finance Minister Ken Ofriata celebrated the PPA's achievement. Candidate Akufuado promised to protect the public purse, and that's exactly what we've been doing at the Treasury. <laughs> to highlight that point, Mr. Speaker, in a space of 31 months, by reviewing contracts that we either sole source or procured through restrictive tender, the Akufuado administration has made savings of 2.75 billion. When it comes to how taxpayers' money has been managed, the facts, Mr. Speaker, speak loudly. We believe it is very important on days like this that we show to the people of Ghana that this government, their government, the Akufuado government, the new patriotic party government, your government, spends the taxes you pay for your benefit and for the benefit of the collective. You talked about savings that were made mm. and uh, some people out there, including myself, mm. uh, have questions about it. Mm. Is it possible to get a list of the contracts that came and how much you saved on each one of them so we can also make an independent calculation and mm. confirm mm. what PPA and then the finance ministry mm. have put out there? Yeah. Sure, the uh, data is available, and so um, as a follow-up, if you after this interview, if you book an appointment, I will link you up to get the relevant data, so you can also uh, do the calculation and know the source from where these analyses are made. After the interview, I wrote officially requesting the information. A response signed by the legal director and board secretary of the PPA said. The PPA could not give the information to me because it would infringe on the PPA's confidentiality obligation. Interestingly, the PPA is supposed to publish such restrictive tendering and single-source procurement contracts on the authority's website. In fact, some of the contracts are on the PPA's website, but the PPA would not give out the specific contracts from which it claims to have made the savings. So what is confidential about contracts which the PPA is supposed to publish and actually publishes on its website. The Public Procurement Authority, under the leadership of Ejenim Boatin Ej, popularly known as ABAJ, has won many national and international awards for its achievements. Uh, awards have been many. I, I, uh, I wish I knew that uh, you mentioned that was perhaps I will have uh, displayed a couple of the, the plaques. But uh, the recent award that uh, the Public Procurement Authority won uh, was through the hard work and the kind of uh, innovation that we have brought into the public procurement landscape. Not only recognized here at home, but uh, uh, it's mostly recognized by researchers across the globe. So we picked um, an award in Berlin uh, last month, last two months, that was in June, uh, from the European uh, Research Society. With the news of significant savings and the national and international accolades, it appears the era of procurement irregularities is a thing of the past. My investigation, however, reveals a disturbing trade in government contracts. Even more disturbing are those behind it. There is a group of companies of the Manet Junction on the Spintex Road in Accra called the TDL Group. Talent Discovery Limited is its flagship company. This company has nothing to do with the discovery and development of talents, as the name might suggest. This is where the fits of the Chamba Road and other government contracts are held. Talent Discovery Limited is alleged to be using its political connections to win government contracts and then sell them. So the purpose of this trip uh, to Talent Discovery Limited is to establish two things. That this company actually wins government contracts and two, that it sells these contracts to prospective buyers. So you'll be dealing with them, uh, not with your real name of course. So you'll be called Richard Kumadra and the plan is that you have a brother called Joseph Kumadra who is currently in the United States. He has a business uh, called Kedra Enterprise and Kedra Enterprise is a sole proprietorship that does supplies. You have heard that they, are, they have contracts for sale 
and you would want to know whether it is true and if you can buy some currently i know there is a contract they are selling for 30,000 cities i think it's one of the least contracts they have we are not going to go with any money our intention is not to give them money but to one ascertain that there is they have contracts and to get some documentary evidence that uh, they are selling these contracts and the evidence is important because uh, like witches they say you don't catch a witch with an empty hand Well, good morning. Everything cool. I'm with the common thing. Okay, I'm here to see. So, what is your company name? Richard Kumar Drum met the general manager of the TDL group, Thomas Amwa. Mr. Amwa signs the contracts on behalf of TDL. He took notes on a fake business and proceeded to talk about the number of contracts at hand. There have been people mm -hmm. interested in the project. Actually, mm -hmm. some have dropped checks. Okay. But I am key to people like this project. Okay. Because if it goes over, it tarnishes the image of your company. Okay. Okay. So they are outstanding by it because the terms of it is very, very favorable. Mm -hmm. And everybody will want to do it. Okay. The contract is going to ask. The bank paid fifty eight thousand dollars. Another fifty eight thousand dollars. So you can wait to Okay. Okay. Then if we, we, we sign all necessary agreements. Okay. Because okay. okay. somebody is actually interested and want to pay to this. Okay. I am uh, I am okay. I am I am as well very much interested. <laughs> very much interested. May yeah, I keep saying that? Yeah. Everybody can say I am interested, mm. but the one to commit himself yeah. is the one. Yeah. He would not part with any document until payment was made. He said there was a non refundable registration fee of 5,000 CDs for any business wanting to do business with Talent Discovery Limited, but the registration could be waived if we were prepared to pay the full price of the contracts he was selling. For us, we have something we call suppliers and contractors registration form. Okay. And any contractor will engage in pay a fee of 5,000 okay. rupees to register with us. What happens is that when that amount is paid, any time there is an award of payment, we open up to the supplier or contractor okay. to hear from you if the supplier is interested. Okay. There, are, there are cases we can come into a negotiation on percentage wise okay. and then even use the supplier's company details for a direct contract award. Okay. Okay. So that is what we do. Okay. So once we find the, the contractor register with us, we are good to give any information okay. we have to be able to enable him to work. Work. Okay. Richard tried, but he had to leave without any documents because the general manager insisted no document would change hands until money changed hands. You said the registration is 5,000 cities. Okay, so without that we cannot proceed with any further engagement. Okay. Yes, of course, you have, what is it, the outright... The outright purchasing amount, okay. We were then compelled to pay the registration fee of 5,000 cities and a 10,000 cities deposit to secure copies of a contract. The 10,000 I'm going to give you is not for any specific project for now. I'm just going to give you 
long hand as a deposit so that when we make a decision uh, and we make a decision on which of the contracts we want to execute then we can then do the top and then we finalize okay so this is the check this <laughs> <laughs> the general manager revised the terms of the contract he was initially selling for 30,000 cities. The total sum of the contract was 158,900 cities, awarded to Talent Discovery Limited by the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority to supply one mobile column lift for the Takrad port. The form is quite detailed. Okay. I don't know if you want to fill it here or if you want to take it out. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Would it take a long time? It will depend on you. Okay. Okay. So now that I know that I have a business with you, then yeah. I can open things up. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. Then I would take it. I'll take it away. Fill it and then and then bring it. So. Are you? Ariel, please get me a copy of this and the Santa Maria drinks. And then the mobile column that Ghana put there. Okay. If you have funds, yeah. that is if you have mm -hmm. agent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The ministry is on my neck. Okay. There is this project. Yeah. It was awarded to us to go and do Santa Maria. Okay. Drinks. Wow. But Dr. Okoboy okay. wants us to tackle his end, which is this. This I mean the rest. No, the same drinks. The same drinks, okay. Okay. So I'm going to check the site. Okay. Uh huh. So any contractor who comes in, I actually sold it to somebody. Okay. What is happening? The person don't have the funds to carry the project. Okay. Okay, that is what is happening. Okay. So I've agreed with the person, I will sell it to another person who have the funds. Okay. And give him his record. His record. His share deposit he paid. Okay. Uh, okay. Which is agreed. Okay. So that side we don't have. We don't have the issues. Okay. okay. And then I have secured another dormitory project at Abubo. Okay. Which I'm going to take site possession tomorrow. Okay. That one is also there. Okay. Another proof uh, story dormitory at Savalungu also in the pipeline coming. Okay. Uh -huh. So there are a couple of projects. Okay. Mobile column lift is also there. Okay. Somebody came to deposit. How much the person got? 5,000. 5,000. Okay. Instead of 25. 25, okay. Yeah. okay. So the, pe the, whole, the whole thing we were looking at 30. Okay. But as of yesterday, the amount revised because we realized that even in the market, it's limited for around 50k. Yeah, that's true. Uh -huh. that's true. So we are now looking at 50. Okay. So 50, if the person do 25 upwards, okay. the balance 25 will be paid when the mobilization first comes. Okay. Okay. Because there is a mobilization of 63,000 dollars. Oh, okay. Okay. Which I have put in the requisition. I'm doing it with public money. The mobilization is 63. Yes, because the the contract sum is Oh, okay. 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 Forty percent of it. Okay. Okay. That is that is where we are. Something we can consider. This was the least contract being sold at the time of this investigation, and it was bought by someone else even before we raised the money to secure evidence. The selling prices of the other contracts were in hundreds of thousands and millions of cities which we could not pay but we needed evidence of more than one contract the 10,000 cities was paid by richard whose brother and friend we told the company would be there to pay 210,000 cities on a particular thursday for one of the projects we requested more than one contract document so that the financier would make a decision on which one to start with before coming with the cash that Thursday. We also asked the general manager to send us a draft memorandum of understanding, spelling out the terms of the engagement. He drafted one using the Ministry of Education contract and sent to us via email. KDRA Enterprise is not a registered business 
and did not provide any evidence of undertaking any contract, but TDL was prepared to sell off government contracts including construction projects with complex drawings and specifications. How do, do we deal with consultants and other people when they come on site? Consultants, we will take care of them. When they come on site? When they come on site, they only come in to inspect. Okay. But if, before they come on site, they will call us. They will call you, yeah. This investigation has revealed that the sale of the contracts resulted in some delays. For instance, the contract for the storm drain project at Santa Maria was signed on the 5th of April 2019. The execution of the project was supposed to begin two weeks after signing the contract and be completed within six months. But four months later, the company was still looking for a buyer. Surprisingly, the general manager of TDL said the ministry had written to change the sites of the contract from Santa Maria to Teshi without varying the contract sum. The Santa Maria? Yes. Then Abigail, please come and look for sites, the change of site location for me. Mm. It is the same parameter. Okay. Mm. The thing is that mm -hmm. we will be the same people to do Santa. Okay. The Santa was divided into two. Okay. One, we uh, are two different contractors okay. because the site is big. Okay. The test uh, drainage, hydro, give me the, the change of location. Mm -hmm. So when the center was awarded, yeah. Dr. Koboy was also on us okay. that he needed us to do the expect. Oh, okay. uh -huh. Uh -huh. So the hydro people gave us a letter okay. to do it with the same length and the big specification in the center area. The center area. Uh -huh. so, uh, he said the new arrangement was more profitable because the amount of work at Teshi was less than what the company was supposed to do at Santa Maria, but the cost of the contract remained fixed. So this is the, the original letter. No, oh, okay. The Ministry of Education contract was awarded under the Emergency Senior High School project and was to be completed in six months. After the first month, however, TDL was still looking for a buyer. When we said we could move to the site within three weeks, the general manager reiterated the urgency of the project. If they are going for the Abuku project, I wish they could. The three weeks would be long for them to go on site. Oh. So but if they clear site, okay. they don't, it takes time to prepare themselves. Okay. So that at least they can know that there is work in progress. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Once they clear site, that one even if they want to take one month to go to site and start, nobody have issue with them. Okay. The 22 million Willensee Chamber Road contract was awarded to Be Molly Limited, but the TDL general manager said that was a sister company. I have a Peter Rose project in front of. Me. Okay, great. great. It's, it's awarded to another sister company of us. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's our sister company. Okay. 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 But that one, we were looking for 15%. 15? Yes, of the contract sum. Instead of contract the contract sum is? Yes. What's the contract sum? The, the contract sum is 22 million. 22? Yeah, 22. It's bitumen sufficient. Okay, okay. In the okay. northern region. This contract has gone past two thirds of the time for its execution, but nothing was being done at the time of our visit. In Accra, it was still being sold for 15% of the contract sum to a buyer that was yet to be found. Contracts, according to Mr. Amwa, were sold at 18% of the contract sum. But for this contract, TDL was prepared to take 15%. The immediate past chairman of the Ghana Road Contractors Association, Ebo Hilton, says selling a road contract for 15% of the contract sum is problematic. Whoever is going to buy that kind of project or contract it's going to lose. Usually when we are preparing our bids, usually our profit margin is 10%. And so if, as a contractor, you have to go and buy a contract from somebody, and the person is demanding between 15 and 18%, then what it means is that he's taking away your profit and also part of your overheads. He's taking all that away. And there is no way the contractor can make any gains on that project. 15% of 22 million cities is 3,300,000 cities. 
Thomas Amos said, TDL uses part of the money to pay officials of the ministries and departments which award the contracts to the company. When I wrote to the ministries, department and agencies, they said they did not know TDL was engaged in the sale of contracts. They said they did not and would not sanction any such actions. So why does TDL sell contracts instead of executing them? Thomas Amos said the company had contracts to clear goods for Cocoa Board and the Ghana Water Company Limited. These contracts required pre-financing, so the proceeds from selling the government contracts were used to execute these jobs. We used to be doing them, okay. but we have a lot in our hands. We carry up for Ghana Water oh. and Cocoa Board. Oh, okay. Okay. So what we do is, when we start some of this project, mm -hmm. we use the same money mm -hmm. to, 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 to be doing the clever mm -hmm. else the morage mm -hmm. will kill you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. My checks at the Ghana Water Company and Cocoa Board confirmed that TDL was indeed doing business with them as a clearing agent. Ebo Hilton says contractors are allowed to subcontract or sublet parts of the work to other companies with the permission of the awarding entity. In that case, the main contractor pays the subcontractor for the amount of work done. He says it is unacceptable to win a contract and sell the entire contract to someone else at a price, especially without the approval of the ministry or agency awarding the contract. If I come to you with a contract and tell you to pay me 15% of the contract sum so that I give it to you to execute, does that constitute subletting, subcontracting, or this an outright sale? You, you have the contract, you come to give it to me and ask me to pay you 15%? Yes. No, I wouldn't call. I would, I would call that a, a, a sale. I would call that a sale. And. Um, like I said, for, for this to happen, you need to get the approval of the awarding agency. And I believe that in most cases, the awarding agency is going to reject it. Unless you do it on the quiet. But then, what it means is that you, you, you are still going to maintain the name, the original name of the contractor and all of this, which is also dangerous. If you have to tell me that I should pay you this sum of money, and then you give me the contract. Then I will say that's an outright sale. You are selling the contract to me. And in most cases, uh, like I would say, I'm saying, it's dangerous, number one. And number two, it has a whole lot of implications because uh, depending on the amount of money that you are taking from, from the, uh, uh, contractor. the contractor, it could result in uh, uh, shoddy work being executed or the job even being abandoned if he realizes that he's going to lose. The Auditor General, Daniel Domilevo, says selling of contracts amounts to misrepresentation. To me, it is a misrepresentation or fraud, a deceit. Because it is like me presenting myself to you as a medical officer. After you have given me the patient, I go and call a quack to come and, 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 and do the job. If I understand you, you are having companies who are operating like the guru boys, so more or less a guru company. My goodness, <laughs> God save this country. <laughs> if that is what is happening, mm. and I hope no public servant is involved. Because if there are people who are supposed to serve the public interest are also involved in this, then uh, God save this country. When asked how TDL, a company that was found barely two years ago, was able to win so many government contracts, Thomas Amos said the company had links to the top. He said with time, he could help Kedra Enterprise to win contracts directly from the government agencies. The ministries, 
departments and agencies have confirmed that the contracts being sold by Talent Discovery Limited are authentic contracts that have been awarded to the company. The company has contracts with the Ghana Water Company, Ghana Cocoa Board, and the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. It also has contracts with the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Works and Housing, and four contracts with the Ministry of Special Development Initiatives to construct dams under the government's One Village, One Dam project. At the time of filing this report, Talent Discovery Limited was shortlisted for restrictive tendering by the Bank of Ghana for the supply and installation of air purifiers. The company has also been shortlisted by the Roads and Highways Ministry for three road contracts and the evaluation process is currently ongoing. These are what I've been able to confirm. There could be more. It is said that a bear that dances in the middle of the road must have its drama or dramas in the nearby bush. And a new company with so many contracts with ministries and government institutions must indeed have links, as its general manager said. A search at the Registrar General's department shows that Talent Discovery Limited has two shareholders, a Ajay, AJ, a majority shareholder of 60% of the shares, and Francis Ahin, who owns the remaining 40% shares. The two are also the directors of the company, which was registered in June 2017. Speaking generally on how to expose people who try to vary their names in order to hide their ownership of companies, the CEO of the PPA, Ejenim Boatin Ejay said, a number of ways could be used to reveal the true owners. Well, some people have a way and I have dealt with some in the past. Yeah. They decide, they, not... to, they decide to even uh, use, if they are using their names, mm -hmm. they decide to use, uh, pair them in a way. Mm. So for instance, if you have three names, they can use Ajenim Boatin to register one company, mm -hmm. use the Boatin AJ to register, to register another, another company. And then Ajenim AJ to register another company. Yeah. Do you How know, do you, do, you know do you know what some, uh, you see, when people are trying to perpetrate uh, perpetrate any kind of fraud, I would say that at the time that they have the intention to do that, they are not so smart to look at the other implications. They can change and do this uh, in, in lottery, they call it what? Permutation. permutation. Mm -hmm. They can do all this permutation, but one thing that gives them out is they have the same address. Or you can locate one particular telephone number running through, you know, and it becomes so clear that yes, they tried to, you know, as it were, uh, uh, navigate and, and, and manipulate the system. But there is something that will always, uh, you know, give them out by that kind of trailing, you know. And we have seen it several times. Wow. Sometimes it's not the name, it's telephone number. Sometimes it's not telephone number, it's address, location. Of the two directors and shareholders of Talent Discovery Limited, one of them pointed to the PPA CEO. The spelling of his AJ name and AJ are the same as those on the registration documents, even though the registration of the company does not have his middle name or its initial. Yeah, the right spelling and the right name is AJ name Boatin AJ, and okay. the AJ name is A D J E N I M. Okay. It's not the A G Y. Okay. Because it takes the same uh, source from the same name, which is also A D J E I. A J O. Yes. Oh, okay. uh -huh. So A J His official name, as found in documents he signs, is not A J Nim A J. He is A J Nim Boatin A J, but he signs A B A J in official documents, including approval letters at the PPA. Normally, I try to limit the full name as much as possible because of how people call you. When people call the A Nim Boatin, they leave the A J. Oh. All right, so then I feel that uh, my surname has been shortchanged. So I rather prefer the ABAJ, in which case the AJ becomes prominent. But there are more clues. Two of the companies of the TDL group, Frosty Ice Natural Mineral Water and ABM Logistics Ghana Limited, have shareholders and directors, namely Mercy AJ and Ejenim AJ. The tax identification number of the Ejenim AJ in the registration of Talent Discovery Limited. It's the same tax identification number used by the Ejenim AJ in the company C jointly owns with Mercy AJ. My investigation also revealed that the wife of the PPA CEO is called Mercy AJ, 
so it is highly probable that the Ejenim AJ of the TDL group is the same Ejenim Boatin AJ of the Public Procurement Authority. Beyond the, your professional life, you're also a family man, I guess? Sure. Mm. I'm a happily married man with uh, three uh, lovely children. Wow. Yes. I was reading somewhere that your wife is called uh, Mercy AJ. Yes. Oh, okay. that, is, uh, that is her. Okay. Yes. Mercy AJ is Congratulations my wife. for yeah. all of this. The address of Frosty Eyes, a member of the TDL group, is a street in Airport Hills in Accra, and that is where the PPA boss lives. My investigation revealed further clues that suggested that the head of the Public Procurement Authority was the same person who owned the company engaged in selling government contracts. In March 2018, there was a funeral in a brewery in the Eastern Region and the three shareholders in the TDL group of companies all featured in the funeral invitation. The invitation named ABAJ, CEO of the Public Procurement Authority, as a brother of the deceased. It also named Francis Ahin, CEO of Talent Discovery Limited, and Mrs. Mercy AJ as in-laws of the deceased. Mercy AJ is ABAJ's wife, and Francis Ahin is ABAJ's brother-in-law. With this and other dossier of evidence, I confronted Ejenim Boateng AJ with the inevitable question. Say, so BIJ, do you know of a company called Talent Discovery Limited? I do. Is it your company? No. Uh, do you, so how do you know this company? It's, it's a, a, a cousin of mine. Okay. We have information that this company has been brought here a number of times for approval, restricted tendering. Yes. Did they come to your attention? Yes. And and what I, did you I do did. about it? Yes, I did, I did declare at the, at, the, at the board meeting. You have evidence to show? Yeah. Today? No, it's there. It's in our minutes. Yes, but I'm saying if we want to find out. Yes, it's we... in the minutes, so you can always find out. Okay. And what's the name of this, your cousin? I wouldn't disclose it. You can have it if you want it. We have done our checks and it's not your cousin, but your name is on the registration document. It's not my cousin, he's my in-law, my brother-in-law. Your brother-in-law, yeah. what's his name? I, would, I will not disclose his name. Francis Ahim. Yeah. And then you are the majority shareholder and also a director. I'm not the majority shareholder. I'm you, a director. A director and then 60% yeah. shareholding. No. It is 50-50. And who is the second shareholder? Just two of us. So it is your company? I have a shares in it. Mr. AJ said though Talent Discovery Limited had been brought to the PPA on many occasions for approval, he was not in a conflict of interest situation because he made full disclosure to the board. We have information that this company gets a lot of government contracts and then sells them. They get a lot of government contracts? Contracts. I'm not aware of that. I'm not. But that's the information we have. Yeah, I'm not aware of that. Okay. So if uh, evidence is produced and mm -hmm. then you get to know that this is what the company is engaged in, mm -hmm. what would be your action? Oh, the, the, the person who runs the company goes out to look for business. And is there anything wrong with that? No, but if it is engaged in selling government contracts, he sells government contracts. Yes. I will never be aware. Okay. Never be aware. Okay. But if you uh, get to know, mm. how serious would you treat it? I will tell him to stop straight away. Is it an offense to do that? To do what? To sell. Sell government contracts. Well, the question is, sell by what means? It takes the contract, yeah. it won't deliver, and it goes to sell. And how does that work with the, the company, sorry, the entity that awards the contract? It is, it, is, it is more of the entity that awards the contract and the company that you are saying sells. Yes, but I'm saying if you get to know as a shareholder and director of such a company, how seriously would you take that? 
I would tell, I would, I would, I would take it serious and tell him that uh, that is not acceptable because I'm not aware of what you are telling me. I wrote to ABAJ requesting the board minutes. He promised to give me the week after my interview with him. In a response signed by the board secretary and legal director of the PPA, the PPA declined to give the board minutes saying the documents are confidential. The PPA however said ABAJ disclosed his interest in Talent Discovery Limited when the company was shortlisted for a contract by the Ministry of Inner Cities and Zongo Development. The PPA board also said ABAJ later recused himself from discussions on 14 other occasions when Talent Discovery Limited was shortlisted for government contracts. A disclosure to the board may however not cure the PPA CEO of conflict of interest because of his own explanation of the process. When sole sourcing and restrictive tendering requests are made to the PPA, the CEO and his team conduct due diligence on the companies and the contracts before recommending to the technical committee of the board to either approve or reject the application. The unit I set up is a due diligence unit. That due diligence unit actually conducts due diligence. This means the real work on Talent Discovery Limited at the PPA is done under the supervision of the company's director and majority shareholder before recommendations are made to the board to approve or reject it. After the undercover engagement with the general manager of TDL, I wrote to the company for a response and indicated the content of the secret filming. Lawyers of the company responded on behalf of TDL, denying any wrongdoing. The lawyer said the company did not sanction the actions of the general manager and that he acted on his own. They said disciplinary measures had already been initiated against him, beginning with a query and a suspension while investigation into his conduct continued. In a response to the query, which the lawyers attached to the company's response to me, the general manager said he acted on his own and did not have the permission of his employers. He also admitted in the response that he demanded and received 15,000 CDs from my undercover agent and issued receipts using letterheads of the company. He said, and I quote, So I asked him if he is indeed serious for us to proceed, he should pay a commitment fee of 15,000 CDs. And so he paid 5,000 on one occasion. On another occasion, he came to the office to see me for a copy of the contract and made another payment of 10,000 CDs. Even though the company said it did not sanction his general manager's conduct, he did not appear to hide the trade in contracts. He conferred with the secretary a number of times on the sale and payment of deposits during this investigation. He is also the one whose signatures are on the contracts which the company signed with the ministry's department and agencies, the contracts he was selling. Apart from the issue of conflict of interest, participation in government contracts by companies owned by PPO officials can create unfair competition even if they declare their interest. This is because when government entities send shortlisted companies to PPA for restrictive tendering approval, they often include the contract sum, which is unknown to the companies shortlisted. The PPO official whose company is involved in the bidding process can give information to enhance its tender and this could raise suspicions, especially when the bidding price is so close to the amount budgeted by the awarding entity. For instance, in the Santa Maria project, the Works and Housing Ministry estimated 2 million cities for the project. Talent Discovery Limited won the bid with 1,999,600 cities and 45 pesos almost exactly the amount earmarked by the ministry. If you want us to approve, we can add this company behind the scenes, so they will do it and then uh, bring it. Bring it. Well, that, that is possible if uh, people wants to do that. The lawyers for TDL say ABAJ was a director and promoter of the company, but he has since resigned. The date of his resignation has not been given, but this company was formed after he was appointed CEO of the PPA in 2017. In August 2018, records at the Registrar General's department indicated that he was still a director and shareholder of the company. When I interviewed him this month, he said he was a director and shareholder of the company. Beyond being a shareholder and director, 
APAJ, according to sources close to the company, is the chairman of the TDL group. The PPA board said, had told the board he resigned in September 2017 because his busy shuttles at PPA did not give him the time to perform his functions at the company. Ajenim Boatin Ajay is one of the foremost procurement experts in Ghana. When PPA was formed in 2005, he was the first CEO. He was reappointed in 2017 and entrusted with the authority of the state to lead the PPA to curb procurement irregularities such as the sale of contracts and other procurement frauds. Almost all the contracts which Talent Discovery Limited won were through restrictive tendering. This means that when this company is involved in such contracts, the company's majority shareholder and director is the same man who supervises due diligence on the company. He may be fair, but when a referee is also a player, his fairness may not be appreciated by the other players. Manasseh Azore Arene reporting.